What's the difference between a bounty hunter, an assassin, and a hired gun? This week's sponsor is none other than Dungeon Fog. Now, this is me drawing a map for use in my Dragonlance campaign. This is the lava cave that my player characters are going to start in in their first adventure. Now, this map, as you can see, has been sped up in terms of how quickly I drew it, but the actual time it took me was 37 minutes. Now, it's not just that I have been using Dungeon Fog for years and that's how quickly I can execute a map like this. It is an actual fact just because that's how quick the software is. What I love about Dungeon Fog is that if you are stuck or if you don't know what to do, there are literally dozens and dozens of tutorials on each and every aspect of Dungeon Fog, which you can find on their YouTube channel. So with just a few little additions, a few little tweaks here and there, I've got my tokens in, I've got everything ready, and now I can start my game. Thanks, Dungeon Fog. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy and today we're looking at how to enhance your encounters by looking at the motives of those individuals that are participating in the encounters. And we're talking both social and combat encounters. So what are the motives for your encounters? Well, my goblins, they hit the like button and then they attack because they are bloodthirsty attacking bloodthirsty goblins out for blood. <laughs> and what about your goblins? Bloodthirsty out for blood ogres. <laughs> and your vampires? Well, obviously bloodthirsty. I mean, it's... You get the point. If all of your encounters have the same motive, then most of the time they will start to feel like the same encounter over and over again. So we're going to be looking at the different motives. There are 12 motives that I've identified. If I leave any out or if you have more to add, hell, put them in the link. Uh, put them in the comments, I should say, down below. Let's uh, learn from one another. Anyway, in today's video, we're going to be looking at the first six uh, of those motives. Let me guess. Bloodthirsty out for blood isn't one of them. I mean, it's a staple, right? In, in, even in the Dragonlance, it's all about... It's, there's literally a line which says, This monster will fight to the death. So... Uh, you are... <laughs> You're sadly correct. A lot of adventure modules say fight to the death, uh, bloodthirsty, uh, and that's why oftentimes these encounters feel very much the same. So when we look at the six, the first three could be grouped into a kind of wrong place, wrong time uh, type of motives, if you will. Literally, the PCs or the NPCs just happen to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, and so an encounter takes place. Something that is important to bear in mind is that these are not planned, these are not premeditated, these are just as they happen. So the first one is opportunistic. Now, this is where a bunch of NPCs sees the party and goes, ha ha, we can make a quick buck off of them if we rob them quickly or, uh, you know, we could sell them off or we could take advantage of them in some way. So that's opportunistic. The whole goal is just to make a quick turnaround on engaging with the PCs. The second one is mistaken identity. The NPCs or the PCs go, ha ha, I've asked you, uh, you are the son of a cur and shall be um, suitably thwarted or attacked or arrested or, in other words, someone has mistaken someone as someone that they're not and so the encounter then engages. And then the last one is the incidental, which is Think of like a big battle that's busy happening. The PCs are involved in the middle of this battle and NPCs engage with them. The NPCs have no plan other than engage. They don't have any investment in this whole thing. It's very, very straightforward. So what happens is that these encounters are not structured, they're not planned, they're not well thought out uh, types of encounters. And they play out as, as you would expect. Fine. So these result in the PCs killing the NPCs. 
in a bloodthirsty, out-for-blood kind of way. How is this different from bloodthirsty ogres? What makes them different is the way that these resolve. The moment the player characters or the NPCs uh, realize that it's mistaken identity or realize that they are not going to get a quick return on their action, they're going to run away. They're going to give up. They have no reason to fight to the death. They have absolutely no reason to try and change the situation other than getting away or getting out of it with their lives. And so instead of um, fighting and dying, they might offer up a piece of information. Oh, don't kill me. I will give you valuable information about something. I, I will guide you through the treacherous swamps of doom. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll, 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 I'll clean your boots. Just don't kill me. So it's quite a different outcome. Okay, fine. I, I will give you that. So the NPCs start with bravado, with courage. They, they've seen an easy mark. They go in. They start the battle, maybe not as with much effort as they could, possibly. Then they start to realize that they're starting to lose, so then they throw everything that they have at it, and then they realize that they're really losing to the PCs, so they run as fast away, scattering in all different directions to try and get away from this, and anyone that gets caught is going to go, hang on, my lord, I'll tell you whatever you want to know. I'll do whatever you want to know. I'll I'll help. I'll, I'll contribute to your quest of whatever. Just don't kill me. Oh, all right. I, I, fair enough. It, it is an interesting outcome, to be sure. That's the point. It's a different outcome from bloodthirsty hunting for blood. So already we now have two out, different outcomes, right? Hang on. That only works for combat encounters. What about social encounters? Hmm? Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely, it would work for social encounters. Let's say mistaken identity, for example. The, a, a prince, a noble, sees the party at an event and thinks that they are high-ranking, goes over to them to try and prove his authority, and uh, says, what a droll little party this is. And then the parties go, watcha? Yeah, it's pretty cool, it's kind of nice. You know, all that kind of stuff. And the prince realizes that this is not where they want to be. So suddenly the prince needs to figure out a way out of this entire situation. But protocol demands you can't just go, ooh, and leave. That would be, you know, that, that, that would basically be to the death, right? So what the prince needs to do is figure out a way of exchanging their escape, their life, for something else. Ooh, how entertaining. Let me introduce you to my great aunt. She's very deaf, but I'm sure you'll have a great conversation with her. She's just over here. And so they then introduce and pass off the PCs. As a result, the PCs gain some additional information from Aunt Agatha, who doesn't care about the royal line, or she lets slip that the prince is actually poisoning the king. You know, all those kinds of wonderful things. Such a different kind of outcome just because of looking at the motives. Right, fair, 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 fair. Yes, 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 yes. You said six. We've only had three. What are the other three? So the next three, or the last three for today's video, are contractual motives. So this is where the NPCs have been hired for a specific purpose. So that's literally the first category, is the hired category. A bunch of thugs are hired to go beat up the characters, uh, beat up the PCs. They, they'll go, they'll beat up the PCs. Um, so they have no real vested interest. They, their motive is purely to get paid for performing a function. They also have no loyalty or fealty to the person who hired them. There is no um, greater reason other than I'll give you coins if you go and do X. Uh, that's the one type. The next type is bounty hunter. So this is a similar kind of idea, except that the bounty hunter usually has two outcomes, either dead or alive, usually. Uh, but at the same time, the bounty hunter has zero investment in the player characters, has zero interest in the player characters, and will only get paid once they either bring the player characters in or have killed the player characters and have brought evidence back. 
So that's a, a, a kind of a bounty hunter style. And then the assassination. Now, the assassination is different from bounty hunter. Bounty hunter, if they have to bring back the character dead, their whole goal is just to kill the character. But there is still a personal involvement. The bounty hunter has to collect the pieces. Whereas with an assassination, the assassination has been... Uh, the assassin, I should say, has been hired very specifically to eliminate a target. They don't have to bring back evidence. They don't have to do anything of the kind. They simply have to kill the target. So they can do that at range. So the bounty hunter still has to get up close and personal. The hired thugs usually have to get up close and personal. They have to, to engage, whereas the assassin is very, very different. So their motives and the way in which they're going to go about putting together their plan of action is going to be significantly different. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What's the difference between a bounty and an assassination? You pay to go get the thing or make it dead, right? Well, basically, the difference between a bounty hunter and an assassin, as I mentioned earlier, for those of you that were listening, uh, the, the, the investment is slightly different. With the bounty hunter... If they get their, their quarry, they get paid. If they don't get their quarry, they don't really lose anything, right? They, they do run the risk of losing their life. So, again, I would advocate that they would rather run away than do anything else. But that's about it. For an assassin, the assassin is hired based on their success rate, right? And the bounty hunter is as well, but a yeah, bounty doesn't get the bounty. Well, no, no, no skin lost. The assassin is trying to kill someone. They are going in with deadly intent, and oftentimes that will result in revenge. The, pl the, the, you know, the player characters realize the assassin was trying to kill them, and so they will try and kill the assassin. There's very few party that will go, oh no, it's all right, yeah, you missed, yeah, look, just an inch, but you still missed, so oh, naughty, naughty. They, the party are not going to, they won't forgive the assassin. So the assassin has a much higher stake, which means that the assassin might linger a little bit longer than a bounty hunter um, who doesn't have as high a stake. Clear? All right, I can see how all of this would make it different, but surely then all of your encounters now are the NPCs giving up and running away. How is that really different from bloodthirsty out for blood? I mean, it's still all just the same outcome. It's just a different outcome that's being all the same. Well, not really. Bloodthirsty encounters to the death result in dead ends, whereas where your NPCs are now surrendering to the party to preserve their own lives and offering up options for the party to now pursue, the bounty hunter who won't fight to the death and who says... I am not your enemy. I was hired. There's a bounty on your head. The man who put the bounty on your head lives over there. I can show you the back door. Let me go free. Suddenly your adventure now moves forward. Your player characters have got direction. They've got a sense of focus. They have some additional information which they fought for. So it'll be valuable information to them. So there is so much more benefit to having the NPCs surrender or try and get away and then surrender as opposed to just fighting to the death. So I, that hopefully will answer your question. Yes, all right. I, I can see that. I can see that. Okay. So how do I know which one to use? That's an excellent question. So when, when, when you are looking at which one to use, I always look at the goals of the NPC. What does the NPC want to achieve? Does the NPC um, need to, to Im, in, impede or to, to find justice or to incommode or to destroy the PCs? Uh, do, they, do, they, do they need to remove them from society? So it's an assassination uh, type of of motive so look at what the goal is of the npc and then try and look at the motives the list of motives and go well that one allows me to achieve that more effectively than that one for example and the other three are yeah so so um the wrong place the wrong time mistaken identity that kind of stuff those are pace setters so your party's in a forest and they are arguing about which way to go because they all want to go in different directions Throw in a bunch of goblins. Bloodthirsty? Yeah, sure. 
Okay, bloodthirsty goblins. But they're opportunistic goblins. They see the party arguing. They think they can get in and get out quite quickly. Uh, they attack from the trees. It's a surprise type of thing. But then the PCs start to win. So then the goblins, like all bloodthirsty goblins, scatter to the four winds. What that should do, though, is help motivate the party to go, well, if we hang around some more, we're going to get attacked by more goblins. We need to decide and move forward. To all of our wonderful patrons, supporters, sharers of our content, and retweeters of our tweets, I wish you a wonderful festive season, if it is indeed a festive season for you. I wish you much gaming, relaxation, and enjoyment over this time period. And I do hope that you get to spoil yourself just a little bit, like with some new dice, or a nice little mini, or a book or something. You know, something that you've earned. Anyway, until next week, happy gaming!